The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of those fine Fitch products, present the Fitch Bandwagon, starring Alice Faye. You never know just how much I love you. You never know just how much I care. And Phil Harris. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy. And that's what I like about the South. <laughs> Last week, Phil and Alice spent a few restful days up at Lake Arrowhead. We find them now driving back to Hollywood through the beautiful San Bernardino Valley. It's a typical sunny California day. You can't see a thing, Phil. Turn your fog lights on. No, no, honey, it's not so bad along here. I can almost see the radiator cap. <laughs> We better get supper somewhere. We got an awfully late start. Okay, honey, we'll stop after a while. Say, uh, what are all those bushes growing alongside the road there? I've been noticing them for the last hour. Why, they're vineyards, Phil. This is the heart of the grape country. What's grapes? <laughs> Why, Phil, they crush grapes to make wine. Yeah? yeah? Of course. Years ago, people used to trample grapes into wine with their bare feet. <laughs> You get back in this car and put your shoes on. <laughs> Why, Mr. and Mrs. Harris, welcome home. Hello, sissy. How were things while we were gone? Well, they were just fine. Was it very cold up at Lake Arrowhead? Cold? Oh, sissy, it was so cold, the only way I could keep warm was to tune in to Gabriel Heater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you kitchen comedian, you. You drive us a bitch. Oh, by the way, there's some mail for you in on the coffee table. Oh, thank you, sissy. We'll find it. Good night. Yeah, good night, sissy. Good night. Hey, honey, look here. We must be very popular. We got a lot of mail today. <laughs> Hey, what's this one here addressed to you? Oh, I don't know. Open it up. Well, what is this? Dear Mr. Harris, thanks for your letter. As requested, we are sending you our special dynamic pension muscle building course. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, Charles Atlas. Phil, what did you send for a course from Charles Atlas? Well, I've seen his picture in a magazine, and I can't stand to have anyone prettier than I am. <laughs> oh, look, here's a letter addressed to both of us. Let's see now. Why, it's an announcement from Emily Williams. She's giving a musicale tomorrow. All right, so what? Them snooty parties she gives ain't for us. Phil, I think we should go to this musicale. Emily always has so many interesting people to talk to. What do you mean, interesting people? I talk to you all the time, don't I? <laughs> I know, honey, but once in a while I like to get out and hear some two-syllable words. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I know plenty of two-syllable words. Name one. Lum and Abner. <laughs> Don't tell me. Look, honey, we don't want to go to no swanky parties. I don't know how to act at them affairs. Well, that's no problem. Just be yourself. Yeah? I tried being myself the last one we went to, and they threw me out on my nose. Well, I'm looking forward to a very charming evening. Well, oh, Miss Society, huh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> don't think it ain't been charming. <laughs> No, no, not at all. Well, look, kid, until you got in this picture racket, your idea of a big night was to buy a pail of beer and ride back and forth on the Staten Island Ferry. <laughs> Phil, I never rode back and forth on the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, no? Then how come you always back into your slip? <laughs> Phil, 
Bill, I covered the children. Why don't you take a last look at them before we turn the light out, huh? Yeah, honey, I'd love to. Oh, just look at those cute little rascals. Sound asleep. Gee, they're so sweet and innocent. I wonder if I ever looked like that. Nah. <laughs> well, good night, Phyllis. Good night, baby Alice. Phyllis, are you awake? Yes, Alice. Did Daddy kiss you too? I'll say. Boy, does old hotshot need a shave. <laughs> Yes, and he got vanishing cream all over me. <laughs> Wasn't Daddy cute in his new sleepers? Yes, he is sat feeding them just like ours. Did you notice Daddy when he tiptoed out? Uh-huh. Why doesn't our sleepers have rhinestone buttons? <laughs> I wonder what they brought us from Arrowhead. I don't know. If somebody gives me one more worry panda, I'll scream. We'd better go to sleep now, Phyllis. All right. Alice, how old is Daddy? I don't know. I heard him tell Sissy he was 29. Oh, murder! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Twenty-nine. That's as high as Daddy can count. <laughs> Good night, Phyllis. Good night. Good morning, Luigi. Good morning, Cece. I bring in some flowers for the house. Oh, well, put them down there. <laughs> Say, what's that under your arm? Huh? Oh, these are Mr. Harris' shoes. I found them this morning in the car, full of grapes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they got home from Arrowhead last night. Uh, was he... Uh... No, no, not this time. <laughs> You know, they are getting around a lot lately. Yes, yes, they are. Luigi, have you ever been to a musicale? A musicale? Oh, yes. That is a gathering at someone's home where the guests are entertained by beautiful music. <laughs> well, Mrs. Harris is taking Mr. Harris to one tonight. Oh, murder. <laughs> That's going to be something. Oh, but Luigi, Mr. Harris is a musician. Musician? <laughs> Sissy, charity begins at home. But you are overdoing it. <laughs> anyway, I don't think he'll go. Oh, he'll be there, all right. Mrs. Harris has that you'll go or I'll cut off your allowance looking her eyes. <laughs> Maybe so, Sissy, but five is going to get you eight. He comes home with his skin nose again. Uh, by the way, has Mr. Harris left yet? Oh, yes, he just went off in the car. He had to go downtown. <laughs> Man, what a day. Just listen to that motor purr. Yeah, and if I can only get something good on the radio. And now here is the one and only Frankie Remley of Phil Harris's orchestra, bringing you his transcribed musical frost warning. <laughs> frost warnings? So that's the big radio job he told me about. Uh, take it, Frankie. There's no sunshine in old Pomona. The fruit is freezing in Anaheim. So I am warning each orchard owner, get your smudge pots out in time. You are my smudge pot, my only smudge pot. You keep the oranges free from blight. Can't do without you. California, though you stink the air up each night. 
Hmm. Stink the air up. He's not doing so bad himself. <laughs> I gotta change that guy. Maybe I can get some dance music on there. <laughs> Hey, that's more like it. Sure, I remember this one. Come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. The hip hooray and the ballyhoo, the lullaby of Broadway. The rumble of that subway train, the rattle of the taxi. The daffodils who entertain at Angelo's and Maxie's when the Broadway baby says goodnight. It's early in the morning. Manhattan babies won't sleep tight until the dawn. So, good night, baby. Good night, milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Sleep tight, let's call it a day. So come along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. The hidey ho and the revive the do, the lullaby of Broadway. The band begins to go to town and everyone goes crazy. You rock a by your baby round till everything gets hazy. Hush a by, I'll buy you this and that. You hear a daddy saying, then baby goes home to her flat to sleep all day. So good night, baby. Good night, old milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Sleep tight, let's call it a day. Listen to the lullaby of old Broadway. Some gentlemen like blondes, some brunettes, some redheads. But all men like hair that looks caressably soft and touchable. Hair that's lustrous and manageable. Beauty-conscious, beauty-wise women know the bewitching tresses men admire come from hair that's absolutely clean. That's why so many women use Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. For Fitch Shampoo has a special reconditioning action that thoroughly cleanses the hair and scalp, leaving the hair healthy-looking, soft and shining with a sunlight sparkle. Thousands of women shampoo their hair regularly with Fitch in a beauty ritual they know gives unsurpassable results. Fitch leaves each hair strand clean and sparkling. Since Fitch is completely soluble, only an ordinary water rinse is needed. This famous shampoo is good for all colors and textures of hair, and it's so gentle it will not harm even a baby's tender scalp. Fitch has been granted the Good Housekeeping Seal and the Parents Magazine Commendation Seal. Ladies... Be hair beauty-wise. Use Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo regularly. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. Hey, Curly. Hey, Phil. Hiya, Frankie. Hey. What are you doing standing here on the corner of Vine Street? Waiting for my fiance. Yeah? What's her name? Leilani. <laughs> Leilani Schwartz. <laughs> Leilani Schwartz. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's very pretty. Hey, uh, uh, are you really engaged? Sure. Around her neck, she's wearing my guitar pick. <laughs> well, gee, Frankie, I'm glad to hear it. Look. Come on with me a minute, Willie. I want to talk to you. Let's get a cup of coffee, Okay. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? This ain't a bad-looking restaurant right here. Let's try this joint. Okay. After you. <laughs> Here's a booth. Let's sit down. Hey, Frankie. Hmm? I heard you on the air coming down there. Yeah. Them transcribed frost warnings all right, huh, Phil? Look, Frankie, I wish you wouldn't take them outside jobs. It lowers the dignity of our organization. <laughs> Okay, Curly. But you don't help us none with that show of yours. 
Let's get the waiter. Okay. Oh, good day, gentlemen. May I help you, please? Yeah. Yeah, what do you got? Oh, we have a very nice chicken chow mein, egg foo young, bojnay soup, litchi nuts, very good lead cooked pork with bamboo shoots. Yeah. Well, all we want is uh, two cups of coffee. Oh, all I. Hey, Sydney, two coffees! <laughs> To me, my tiny egg roll baby, cuddle up with soybean sauce. Need to cock it on your mong eye, boy. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. You get a floor show with this waiter. What kind of a guy is that? <laughs> what kind of a waiter is that? Oh, where you see the coffee? You have to eat it with chopsticks. <laughs> Oh, no. Hey, Curly. Yeah, Frankie. How about you and me doing a town tonight? No, 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 Frankie. Don't start that. We've been all through that before. Anyway, I couldn't make it tonight. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Alice. The warden won't let you out. (laughs) Stop it. It ain't that at all. Me and Alice is going to one of them musicals tonight. Musical? Yeah. Oh, twine me a garland of roses. (laughs) Oopsie poopsie. (laughs) Well, don't get so nervous, kid. (laughs) Not my idea of it all. I wouldn't be wanting to go. I'm going to hate every minute of it. Oh, now, what do you mean? If you got to go, make the most of it. But, Frankie, I'm going to feel out of place. I won't know how to act with them society apples. Suppose they start bragging to me about their stocks and bonds and then ask me how much money I got. What am I going to say? Don't say nothing, Phil. Just point to Alice. <laughs> That's slowing down. <laughs> yeah, but be sure you watch how you eat, though. You mean them guys eat different than we do? Sure, Curly. All them rich people chew their food with lorgnettes. <laughs> lorgnettes? What's that? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's an upper plate with a built-in mix mash. <laughs> That sounds pleasable. Yeah, it could be. Look, Frankie, are you sure, oh, though, that them... Oh, here we are, please. Two cup oh, coffee yeah. for a number one gentleman. Also, two tiny tea biscuits with fortune inside. Oh, fortune inside. Yes. <laughs> fortune. fortune. Hey, I'm going to look at my fortune. Let me see what I got here. Hey, look, Curly. It's all in Chinese. Yeah. Hey, bud. Huh? What does it say? Oh, i read it to you. Hold it, hold That's it. That's what I like about this show. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but what does that mean? Oh, American translation. Yeah. Take back your shamba eye, your yamba eye, your kanga egg for young. Uh, then I break my oh, back. Oh, Frankie, let's die. get out of here. <laughs> You haven't get dressed, Phil. We ought to leave for the Williamses in a half an hour. Okay, honey, I'll be ready in a minute. I laid all your clothes out on the bed. Hey, wait a minute, Alice. Where did this dinner jacket come from? Where's the one I used to wear when I took the band on the road? Oh, Phil, you can't wear that one tonight. It might scare someone, the way those lapels light up. <laughs> oh, but honey, I just put the special Christmas bulbs in. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't wear it, Phil. Besides, the batteries are dead. Okay, okay. Hey, Alice, I can't get into this shirt. Here. Here, I'll help you. Phil, where did you get those awful suspenders? What's wrong with them? Why, look at what it says on them. Souvenir of Atlantic City, 1926. <laughs> Darn tootin', I'm proud of them, too. That was the year I got honorable mention in the bathing beauty contest. <laughs> You know what, stepping out like this, honey, reminds me of that song that you did in one of them pictures a long time ago. What song? Don't you remember it? Slumming on Park Avenue. Oh, yes, I remember that. Put on your slumming clothes and get your car. Let's go sightseeing where the high tone people are. Come on, there's lots of fun in store for you. Lives on Park Avenue. 
Let's go slumming. Take me slumming. Let's go slumming on Park Avenue. Let us hide behind a pair of fancy glosses and make faces when a member of the Colossus passes. Let's go smelling where they're dwelling, sniffing everything the way they do. Let us go to it, they do it, why can't we do it too? Let's go slumming, no slumming on Park Avenue. Let's go smelling where they're dwelling, sniffing everything the way they do. Let us go to it, they do it, why can't we do it too? Let's go slumming, no slumming on Park Avenue. Well, here's that joint where the party is, Williams's Wigwam. Gee, there are a lot of cars parked here. Where are you going to park? Right here, between these two Lincolns. Bill, that space is too small. You'll never get in there. Oh, what are you talking about? I'll make it all right. That'll be as easy as one, two, three. One. Two. Three. Well, now you've done it. You've smashed our trunk and knocked Prentice with the car behind. Well, just don't sit there, kid. Get out and jump up and down on the bumper. <laughs> Bill, I'll do no such thing. Look what you've done to this car. It's a wreck. Oh, what are you squawking about, kid? You got Cadillacs at home you ain't even used yet. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's get into the house. Okay. Hey, Alice. Look at that guy at the door at the Williamson. Is he kidding with that monkey suit? Get a load of that guy. Phil, that's the butler. Oh, the butler? Well, mm -hmm. slip him five bucks. Maybe he'll give us a front table. <laughs> Be quiet. He's announcing the guests. Mr. and Mrs. Rodney Cavendish, Lord and Lady Guilfoyle, Miss Mahitabel Boyagian of Cucamonga, <laughs> Mr. David Tate, and Miss Helen Carter. Go ahead, Phil. Give him our name. All right. Hey, bud. Phil Harris arriving on track five. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, we're together. I'm Alice Fay. Oh, yes. Miss Alice Fay and one meatball. <laughs> you know something, Alice? I'm liable to punch that character right in the nose. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Give him your hat and coat. Yes, if you'll be so kind, sir. May I take your things? Things? Yes. Okay. Here. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Here. I'm sorry, sir, but we have no facilities for checking undershirts. That's my dinner jacket. Bill Harris, put that jacket back on. What, and hide my Atlantic City suspenders? <laughs> I'll inform Mr. and Mrs. Williams you're here. They're in the drawing room. Good. Tell her to draw two for us. <laughs> Tell her to go easy on the collar on mine, bud. Fill it up. Fill it up. No, come along. Sir Algernon Duckworth with the Countess of Vigny, Mr. Harold R. Wickersham with the Duchess of Leicester, Irving Plotnick with the ice cream from Thrifty. <laughs> the right on with the Gee, honey, is it good to get home? Yes, that was quite a party, Phil. 
Yeah, sure was. You can say that again. Quite a party. I'm glad we can sleep late tomorrow. I'm beat, honey. My feet are killing me. Who was that woman you were dancing with? Oh, I don't know. Some British dame. I don't know who she was. She stepped all over my feet, got powder on my lapels, put her clammy hand on the back of my neck, and then asked me if I was Ray Noble. <laughs> you know my coat's longer than that. <laughs> well, Phil, I must admit you did pretty well tonight, except for one thing. What's that? After the recital, you went up to that soprano and said, Look, kid, you'd do all right if you just get rid of that broken down piano player you got there. There. Right there. Well, what was wrong with that? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Only that broken down piano player happened to be Jose Aturbi. Jose? Good night. Good night. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Public enemy number one. That's what dandruff is to the hair and scalp. And yet people need not be bothered with embarrassing unsightly dandruff if they use Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. Fitch is the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff with the first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. For over half a century, Fitch shampoo has proved its excellence by its actual performance. Fitch completely removes dandruff with the first application. And satisfied users have continued to shampoo regularly with Fitch to keep their hair and scalp refreshingly clean and dandruff-free. They know from actual experience how Fitch penetrates and cleanses the thousands of tiny hair openings on the scalp, dissolving all traces of dandruff. Then a rich, billowy lather forms to float away the dissolved dandruff. So, folks, if you're bothered with dandruff, do as countless others do. Use Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo regularly. Ask for it at drug or toilet goods counters or have professional applications at your barber or beauty shop. Let's get the news on the radio before we go to sleep. Huh? Oh, you want the news? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you are. And now we resume our program of dance music from Ling Toy's Chinese American restaurant in Hollywood. Take back your shamba, I your lumba, I your kanga, eh, booyah. Oh, good night. I ain't finished yet. Oh, will you please get this character off? week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. This program is written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, directed by Paul Phillips, with the original music composed and conducted by Walter Sharp. Included in the cast were Janine Roos and Anne Whitfield, Elliot Lewis, Hans Conrad, and Myra Marsh. Alice Fay appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Men use Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic daily. It makes your scalp tingle with that feeling of new life and pep. Fitch's Ideal is not sticky or greasy, so pep up your scalp and give your hair that well-groomed look with Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic. Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.